As we begin our examples, notice this first one. They give us that we've got two sets of lines that are parallel. We have line M is parallel to line N. So what's the very first thing I should probably do? I think label the picture. I think that'd be a great idea. So we're gonna mark them with our little arrowheads. And they tell us that angle four is 113 degrees. So same thing, let's label our picture. Every time that you are given information, always put it in your picture if possible. Now notice the directions say that we're gonna find all angle measures and state the postulate or theorems that you use along the way. Well, we have several angles to look at here. It doesn't matter what order we go in, but I know one that I would start with. Mrs. Palermo, looking at this, what's one angle that we already know? Well, there's a lot of them. <laughs> um, I could say, I could find angle three, first of all. Okay, but even in the picture, since they gave us something, what else do we already know? Oh, we know angle four. We know angle four. And you know do what? Do we need to write that down When they now? say find all angles, that is an angle. Oh. Okay, so I would say that the me um, measure of angle four is 113, but why do we know it? It's given to us. It's given. Okay, go ahead. What else did you know? Angle three. Angle three. What do you know about the measure of angle three? I would say it is 113 degrees. And why is it 113 degrees? Well, because... Oops. If I look at that picture, I see angle three and angle four are vertical angles. Uh -huh. And we know because of the vertical angle theorem, so VAT, that all vertical angles are congruent. Perfect. Okay, what else do you know? Um, I'm going to continue with this idea of the congruent step. So I'm going to look and see angle one. Okay. I'm just going to skip around. Angle one's measure is also going to be 113 degrees, and that's because angle one and angle four our corresponding angles, so cap, so corresponding angles postulate says if two lines are parallel, mm -hmm. corresponding angles are congruent. Right. And actually, you're going to notice that one and three, we could have also used that as my reason, saying that this is also 113 because those alternate exterior angles. So I could say, or A A A E A T. Perfect. So either it, one of those would be But I don't reasons. need both. I just need You don't one, need right? both. Just one. Okay. What else? Um, let's do angle eight next. Okay. And I'm going to say angle 8 is 113 degrees as well. Now, I see, based on what you're saying, I see a few different reasons. Uh-huh. Okay, one reason I see is vertical angle theorem. Because angle 1 and angle 8 are vertical angles, so they're going to be congruent. Now, that doesn't depend on the parallel, all right? But, right. again, that's a special angle pair we know. Um, to depend on the parallel, I would say angle 8 is 113 because of maybe AIAT. So, alternate interior angle theorem because angle four and angle eight are alternate interior angles and because of parallel, they're congruent. Perfect. You could also say <laughs> cap because of corresponding angles postulate because angle eight and angle three are corresponding. So there's lots of different ways. There are lots of different ways. I'm probably not gonna keep listing all the different ways if you guys are cool with that. Um, you guys get the idea. Once you find one angle and then find another, you have more and more reasons that you can use. Absolutely. Okay, so we still have some empty angles. We've gotten all of those pieces that are congruent. Yes. What else do we know? Um, let me just go to angle two. Okay. That sounds good. I'm gonna say angle two is 67 degrees. Okay. And again, several different ways. I see I could use, if I was going off of angle four, I could use CIAT, which is correspond or con consecutive, mm -hmm. sorry, interior angle theorem. And that's based on parallel lines cut by transversal. The consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay. Um, I could have used the linear pair postulate. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right. Angle seven. Angle seven. What do you know? I would say it's 67 degrees as well. So I'm just thinking vertical angle theorem. Okay. And of course, there's other ways Lots we can of do other it. Ways. Yeah, sounds great. Um, let me go to angle five, and I'm gonna say it's 67 as well. All right. And I'm gonna use the parallel to help me here. I'm gonna say corresponding angles postulate. So angle six and angle five, or angle two and angle five, are corresponding, and because of parallel, they are congruent. And then angle six is also 67. And I'll just use vertical angle theorem again. All right, perfect. Notice that once we had really one angle, as long as I know I've got parallel lines cut by a transversal, when we have one angle, 
we really have all of those angle measures. And the reason why is because of all the different theorems, the different theorems involving the parallel or even vertical angles and linear pairs. Absolutely. You just need one and that's it. One angle and you've got eight. Yes. <laughs> Eight for the price of one, that's a great go, deal. I know, <laughs> and it wasn't really hard work either. No. All right, example two, notice the picture. Like right away, I often look at that picture and what are you seeing? They have parallel lines already marked on there for me. Parallel lines cut by a transversal. They even have the angles labeled for us. So right away, I could start talking about what kind of angles. I could talk about corresponding angles, I could talk about vertical angles, linear pairs, consecutive all interior, sorts of all things. kinds of stuff. Yeah. And one thing to notice is that if you know one angle, then all the other ones are either congruent okay. or, supplementary. or supplementary to it, just like the last one. All right, now, a little different scenario. This one, again, going back to what Ms. Hogravy said, label what you have. So angle, we already know parallel, they gave that to us in the picture. Angle four is 72 degrees. An angle eight, or not angle eight, angle <laughs> five is x minus eight. So I'm going to label my picture. I don't really know the actual measure, but I do know it's represented by x minus eight. Sure. Now, the question is, is there a direct relationship between angle four and angle five? Oh, well, they're on alternate sides of the transversal, but they're not consecutive, or they're not, um, <laughs> Yeah. Interior. They're not interior and they're not exterior. Thank you. Like one is exterior, one is yeah. interior. So they're, so I can't they're, do that. They're not a special angle pair then. But I do have like a vertical angle I'm looking at. So in other words, you could find another angle that has a relationship with that one. Exactly. Which one are you looking at? I'm looking at angle one I know is also 72. And that's because? Because the vertical angle theorem. So I want to make a little side note. So angle one is 72 degrees. Because those two are vertical angles, they're congruent. Right. Now, is that angle have any relationship with, direct relationship with angle five? Yeah, those are consecutive interior angles. And we know that consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So this, these are consecutive interior. And so because these are parallel, I can use CAAT uh -huh. and say that those are supplementary, which means what can I do with those angles? That I could add those two measures together. So 72 plus the X minus eight should equal our 180. Now, one thing you might be asked to do is kind of justify. We aren't doing any proofs today, but you're going to see some tomorrow night. Um, and when you're doing that, when it sets up here, now you can go ahead and solve, all right? When you go ahead and solve, you can solve for x, which is what they're asking you to do. Um, and so you do 72 minus 8, and you get a positive 64. And then... When you subtract 64 on both sides, you get x to equal, let's see, 116, is that right? Yep. Now, to check this, you could actually put 116 back in for x here. 116 minus 8 is, what, 108? 108, yeah. And does 108 and 72 add up to 180? That gives us our 180. So it works out. Perfect. This last, oh second to last example that we have. <laughs> um, notice that here we do have some angles that are marked as parallel, but they're not all marked as parallel. So I want you to be aware of that. They've told us that we have these two lines are going to be parallel to each other, but we have two other lines here that they don't mark them at all, so I don't know for sure anything about them. So if we don't know for sure, even though they kind of look that way, we can't assume, right? We cannot assume. Okay. 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 Now notice that they tell us, again, some information. The measure of angle three is 105. We're going to find the measure of angle 1, the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 4. Now, let's take a look at what things we do know based off of our parallel lines. All right. Well, it kind of like it's it's hard to kind of get a visual. So when I'm, okay, I see the two parallel. Uh-huh. And when we're dealing with parallel, we only want to deal with one transversal, right? Right. So depending on which transversal we want. So we have these two parallel lines, and I have two different transversals. I have the one on the left, and I have the one on the right. Now, if I kind of look at just one, let's say I just look at the one on the left. Okay. So I'm just focusing on the, the one on the left transversal, and I look at those two angles, um, and I don't see, like, angle two and angle four, there's not a special angle pair. All right. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I don't even know either one. Like they right. don't give you either information. So exactly. that's probably not going to help us right away. Probably so not. So let's look at the one on the right transversal and look at the two angles that are on that transversal, which is angle three, which is helpful because it's given to you, mm -hmm. and angle one. And the good thing is those two angles are consecutive interior angles. You're right. right. And if those are parallel, then those two add up to 180 because they're supplementary. Right. So I can find angle one by subtracting 105 from 180, right? You got it. So I could say that, I'm just going to write out that the measure of angle one plus our 105 is equal to 180. So that leaves with the measure of angle one at as is 75. Awesome. So that we know just based off of the fact that we have, again, parallel lines cut by that transversal. Can I technically say anything about these two angles then? That's the question. Well, if just with what we're given right now. Yeah. With that, I don't think, I, right now, I'd have to look at it a little bit closer. I'm looking at it, I see angle one, mm -hmm. and we got that, and I like that you labeled it. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to know those other two were parallel, which, right. which they are. I didn't mark it on the picture because I wanted to have that discussion first before okay. we go ahead and talk about it again. Okay. So now I'm going to also give you some more given information. All right. So here's what we were given so far. I'm going to add to our given information that these two lines are going to also be parallel. Okay. I want you guys to realize, though, that if there's if they're not marked parallel, we cannot assume that they are. Yes. All right. Now, given that they were, now what else do we know? Okay. So now I'm going to look at... Let's look at these other lines. Those other ones that are going to help us out here. And, and guys, one thing that if you need to, you can always, like, kind of do what Miss Hilgrave is doing and just, like, highlighting them. You could always redraw the picture with just those two set. You don't have to base it off of what's in front of you. You exactly. can always redraw because sometimes when you have multiple lines in there besides just the two parallel and the transversal, it gets kind of confusing. It does. So I'm going to focus on the, the other two now that we know that they're parallel. Um, let's look at maybe the, the top transversal first. Okay. So I'm looking at angle two and angle three. And, all right, I know angle three, and I know angle two and three are alternate interior angles, and since that those are parallel, then I can say they are congruent. You got it. So, so we angle know. two has to be 105. I just realized we didn't write down, we wrote down that the other two were, um, they were supplementary just kind of with their measures drawn, but I'm going to go ahead and write over here. That reason is because of the consecutive interior angle theorem. I just want to make sure that we know why. Okay. okay. And there's still another angle that we need to find. Okay, so I think we're still going to have to deal with those parallel that you have highlighted. Mm -hmm. But let's look at them, maybe the other transversal, and, and focus on the two angles that are on that transversal. And I notice those two are corresponding angles. And so because parallel corresponding angles postulate states those are congruent. So angle 4 is the same as angle 1, which is 75. Awesome. Notice that we couldn't do anything without having that other parallel. Yeah. With any of the angles that are on that transversal that we didn't know anything else mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. So really, guys, look at the picture and make sure that you know what things are parallel. Because if they're not, mar if they're not marked parallel, we cannot just assume that they're parallel unless it's given. And going off of that, the next section, just to give you a heads up, when we get to 3.4, we're actually going to be proving parallel. So we may not be given parallel and you can't assume. So you got to be very careful with that. Now the last example here, um, notice the given information. I'm going to start labeling this uh, stuff and kind of think about what's going on. So angle one is 70 degrees. So let me label that. Angle three is X. So we don't really know, but we just know. Obviously if you're finding X, maybe a little bit of algebra. Angle 2 is x minus 20. And another thing that's probably important to make note of is the picture. And what is that? What do you notice, Mrs. Obrim? That we Obrim? have some parallel lines. Notice these are parallel. Now, it says find the measures of angle 2 and angle 3. So we know what angle 1 is. We're trying to find angle 2 and three, angle 3. And if we find x, then we can know both, right? Sure. All right, so what do you notice here? Well, I notice that we do have our parallel lines, and just looking at really 
two and three together, they are a consecutive interior angle with angle one. But I'd have to put them together because by themselves they're not really anything because there's really a couple transversals that we have. Yeah, and I like that she's that noticing picture. that because there's this. This is technically a transversal. And guys, you can always. I know it's not like a technically a line as a segment, but if you extend that out, angle three is actually this angle right here. It's not the entire thing here. And then angle two is obviously an angle that's within the two parallel lines in the transversal, but there's no other angle there. And if I look at this other transversal, all right, and what this is where Mrs. Hograve is kind of leading you to. If I look at that transversal, these two together, if I add those up, x and x minus 20, that makes up this whole angle. So I'm going to use a little angle addition posture, uh -huh. right? So I get, what, 2x minus 20, minus 20 and that's because of my AAP. That angle is a special angle pair with which angle? With angle one, one which and, is the 70. And the 70. And what's, what kind of angles are these in, in They're relationship? They're consecutive interior angles, which that means that those two are supplementary. All right. So I know I'm going to take angle one, which is 70, and supplementary means two angles that add up to 180. Mm -hmm. Now, again, not three angles. So that's why we had to first add these together to get one angle. And now I can add that to that 70 and set it equal to 180. And that's because of my CIAT, Consecutive Interior Angle Theorem. Now I can solve this, right? So Definitely. I have, what, 2x plus 50 equals 180. So 2x equals 130. Mm -hmm. So x equals 65. Now, have I finished the problem? No, because they wanted the angle 2 and angle 3. We did find 3. All right, the measure so of angle, angle 3, three is, is 65. And but, how would we find angle 2? So to get angle 2, it was x minus 20. So if I take 65 minus 20, then we're left with 45. All right, so just to double check, how could we make sure we're good with those answers? So all three of those angles together, the 70... The 65 and the 45 should all together equal 180 degrees. Because mm -hmm. these two together are going to mat up to the 110, right. right? So this is the 110. And then if you add that to 70, there's your 180. Perfect.